hello again. Uh, now it's time for uh, Denny Vrandacic to talk about abstract Wikipedia, which I'm looking very much forward to. So without any further ado, welcome, Denny. Thank you. So do I start, start immediately or it looks like, <laughs> OK. Uh, thanks so much for having me here. Thanks so much for the invitation. Um, it's really an honor to present here. I usually present to audiences who don't either much know about languages or don't know much about Wikimedia. So it's great to have an audience who actually um, has a little bit of knowledge about that. So I hope I won't dwell too much on the basics and get straight to the interesting question because there's a lot of stuff we actually have to discuss and talk about. Um, and I'd really love to hear your opinions, your thoughts, your um, questions, and your ideas. So I joined the Wikimedia Foundation last year to work on the project of the AppSec Wikipedia. And um, as you know, the vision of the Wikimedia movement is um, uh, to imagine a world where everyone can share the sum of our knowledge. Well, Wikipedia is celebrating its 20th anniversary. Happy birthday. And um, where are we with regards to these goals? We have more than 300 languages with more than 50 million articles. But as you know, they are very unevenly distributed. On the one hand, we have um, language editions like English with more than 6 million articles. But there's also North and Sami, which is actually great. It's uh, quite a success, as you know, from this conference um, with 7,700 languages, but it's so much smaller than English. And there could be so much more knowledge available to it. But it's not, it's not only the case, you know, English knows everything and all the other Wikipedias are just like, smaller reflections of that large one. No, um, it's actually also the English speakers are missing out on a lot. And all the speakers of a particular language are missing out on a lot because there's a lot of knowledge in the other languages. The second largest Wikipedia by activity, the German Wikipedia, has about 2.6 million articles, um, far fewer than the English one. But the interesting part is that the overlap of the topics of the English and the German Wikipedia is surprisingly small. Only about half of the articles that are in German and in Eng um, are also actually reflected in English. There are more, there's more than a million articles that are available in German on topics that don't have a counterpart in the English Wikipedia. Um, this also counts for the small Wikipedia. Even North and Sami, about a third of the articles in North and Sami don't have representation in English. Uh, so there's a lot of knowledge in each of those Wikipedias. It's not available to many, many readers out there. Here's an example of an article in Northern Sami about a Northern Sami writer, um, which is not available in English, but in, um, but in German and Norwegian and Northern Sami. So of the 20 million topics that have Wikipedia articles, even English only covers about a third of them. So really on the goal to sharing uh, in, of a world where we share all the sound knowledge, and not really that far yet. We've gone quite far in the last 20 years, but there's so much more to go. The core problem, the fundamental issue is that the cost of Wikipedia is the number of topics we want to cover times the number of languages in which we want to make this knowledge accessible, because all these articles are completely independent of each other. We want to reduce this cost by turning this multiplication into an addition, and therefore reducing the cost of creating and, and maintaining Wikipedia by two orders of magnitude. How do we do that? Well, we're already actually on the way to doing that. So if we go, for example, for this article about Marie Curie in Norwegian Bokma. So here, actually, a lot of the content that you see isn't coming in the, it's not maintained the local Wikipedia. The info box and all the information you see here, the picture, the date of birth, et cetera, et cetera, all the references for the info box, um, then the site links, then the authority control files at the, at the bottom of the article, all of these are actually coming from Wikidata where it's maintained uh, only once. And if you updated it, uh, for example, in Swedish or in Swahili or in Chinese, it's immediately visible in the Romanian Wikipedia, in the Bokmal Wikipedia, in the Azerbaijani Wikipedia, and so on and so on. More and more Wikipedias are using the data coming from Wikidata so that we have to only update this information in one place and we're good. Wikidata is available in more than 400 languages. Um, and currently has more than 90 million items, which are connected with more than one to two billion statements and uh, describing those items. 
Um, particularly happy that Wikidata so far, so more than 400,000 contributors that have added that Wikidata um, through their accounts, um, plus many more IPs. Um, and currently we have about 24,000 active contributors per month, uh, which, is a, which is a great number. They have created more than 1.4 billion edits so far. In fact, last year Wikidata became probably the first wiki overall that has crossed more than 1 billion edits. And it was just last year, but not 1.4 billion. English Wikipedia, joined this year as the second wiki there to cross 1 billion edit just in time for its 20th birthday. So um, Wikidata provides already one way to reduce this kind of cost of per topic plus language, because you only have to edit stuff in one place and have it been uh, visible in all the languages. So all we have to do, bring everything from Wikipedia to Wikidata and we're done, right? The problem is it doesn't work like this. Um, the actual core content of the Wikipedia, the most interesting part, hasn't been touched by Wikidata yet. And this is the actual text. And the problem is there's a lot of expressivity that Wikidata just doesn't cover. It. We can't express narrative in Wikidata. We can't express reference by description with Wikidata. We can't express redundancy. I quickly go into two of these. Sorry narrative. So this is a paragraph on a biography of Marie Curie from English Wikipedia. And just let's take a look at the first sentence. We don't even have to read the whole paragraph. So this is about a part where Pierre Curie starts courting Marie Curie. Their mutual passion for science brought them increasingly closer and they began to develop feelings for one another. That sentence is really hard to express in Wikidata. We need some other um, methods to do that. And we can put a lot of the information in this paragraph, in the statements, but you know, that would be still far from everything. We could put all kinds of information, the connection between Krakow, Poland, Marie Curie, her application, the reason that she was denied from her application and so on, that Pierre and Marie eventually married. But then we have this big graph of stuff in Wikidata and we still can't make a story out of it. We can still not turn it into readable text. And Wikipedia articles are not valuable because they have quite a lot of uh, information in them, because there are a lot of, uh, of, uh, of facts being one behind the other. It's because of the story that they're telling. It's because of the editing work that goes into them. This is how we, as humans, are able to process this information by connecting it with what we already know and by, uh, by following the storyline. This is something that Wikidata is really, really not good at. Another thing that Wikidata is not good at is redundancy. So here's one fact that is in every larger Wikipedia article about Marie Curie. It's one piece of information that is completely redundant to our uh, information in Wikipedia, and yet it's in the header of each of those articles, no matter what the language. And remember, those are all independently written from each other, which means someone has gone into each, into in, in every language someone has gone into this article, written this sentence into it, and it stayed there in pretty uh, high visible articles. This matter if it's English, German, Italian, Spanish, Chinese, Russian, Arabic, in all of them we have this information. She's the only person to win a Nobel Prize in two different scientific fields. And this is completely redundant with regards to information Wikidata. Wikidata has all the Nobel Prize winners in which year they won, in which field they won, what they won it for, and so on and so on. So it's, the information is implicit in Wikidata. We don't have to um, make it, but for a human, it still makes a lot of sense to make it explicit because it's such an extraordinary feat that you want to have this explicit in your um, in your article with Marie Curie in the header, and, we, and there's no way to actually express this information in Wikidata. So let's take this sentence as an example and see how we could turn this. And um, Mahir already went through a number of those steps. Here's one possibility. So, um, so we have the sentence Marie Curie was the only person who received no press in two different scientific categories. And there are notations that can actually express this kind of information. It's just that, you know, the, the one that the Wikidata is using is not particularly good at this. And the following is a lot of hand waving. Um, I won't go into details too much, just to convey the basic idea. So one way to express this is by using frames, which is also an old idea in knowledge representation. So let's assume that there is um, only person dead frame. So a frame that says, okay, we want to access the open place. It has two slots, one for person, one for petition. The, the person slot is Marie Curie. And the other is um, 
winning. So and for win, uh, this is a condition that the only person is. And for this, we use another frame. So we can actually kind of nest and build those frames together. Now we're saying award winning. The award that is won is the Nobel Prize. And the type of Nobel Prize, oh, this is a bit complicated. Let's take another frame. Let's take a noun phrase with modifiers. So say two of them. Um, we have different certificate and we have category as the head. OK, so this is now, the idea is that this um, thing here, this, this abstract content, is somehow representing the meaning of the sentence on the right. And it doesn't really matter if this is exactly that sentence, or it could be also this sentence, for example. The only one who ever won Nobel Prize in two different sciences is Marie Curie. It doesn't really matter as long as the meaning is sufficiently similar. What is important is that we can use the same abstract content to also generate it, for example, in German. No Marie Curie would have Nobel Prize in zwei unterschiedlichen wissenschaftlichen Theorien verliehen. Or in any of the other languages. In order to be able to do that, so what we need is basically to have like, these types of frames, we call them constructors for um, for wiki functions. In Upstack Wikipedia, so we have these, like the only person that, which has two slots, one is a person of type person, one is a condition of type verb phrase, returning a clause. And then we have something like award winning, which returns a verb, verb phrase, which is why we can plug it into the condition, as we've seen earlier. It has different other slots where we can add things, um, and so on and so on. So and the idea is we need those kind of constructors. And then for each of those constructors, we need a renderer that turns it into natural language. So the only person that constructor will be turned into natural language, but for example, by something like this. This is obviously, again, extremely hand wavy. Um, and in particular in English, it's, it's super simple because English is such a highly, um, um, uh, it has it has a lot of advantages with regards to natural language generation because you don't have a lot of agreement and morphology going on. So, um, but what we need is basically for each language a renderer per constructor, and um, and. So we need one for English, we need one for German, and in that case, we can take the same sentence generated in a different language. What we get is a pipeline where we have the abstract content, for example, in Wikidata, that's not decided yet. We have to talk with the, um, with the communities in order to figure out where, this place, where the best place for this content actually is. Um, and then we have this abstract content, and it's turned into natural language into, into through these renderers. And then we have natural language uh, text, which can then be used by the Wikipedias to fill their gaps in. So obviously, in English, it probably won't be used that much for Marie Curie, but to for a lot of other things. And then all we have to do is change the renderer. We keep the same abstract content, and we get a different natural language, and we can use that in, the, in that language. So we can do that for all those other languages too. And now, since the team I have isn't that big to cover all the languages, we obviously need to crowdsource the creation of the renderers of the constructors. And so how we do that is by introducing a new project called Wiki Functions. I will talk about this in more detail. But then we can store these renderers, maintain them, create them, and um, have them available for all the different languages of Wikipedia. What we now have is an infrastructure where each content for every topic, for each item, is created only once and maintained only once. And then we have a set of renderers for each language. And this means that the renderers of the content now are independent of each other, which is exactly what we wanted to achieve in order to reduce the cost to a addition, where we have the topics being in, um, done completely independently of the languages. And therefore, we're reducing the cost here um, by those two orders of magnitude that we promised earlier. We already started working on that architecture a while ago. In 2012, we introduced Wikidata and the ability for Wikipedias to access the items in Wikidata. In 2018, we started the Lexemes, which we're going to talk a little bit later, and which already Mahir has mentioned extensively in the previous talk. And uh, what we now need is a place to store the abstract content, as said, we are assuming for now that this will be in Wikidata, and then Wiki functions where we will have the renderers and the content. Sorry, and the constructors for building the content. What we want to have is that all of these, the const content, constructors, renders, are maintained by the community. They're completely owned um, by the community, and um, you're working with this. Is, uh, this, is, uh, this is your uh, work. We have to achieve that the system can be understood and edited predictably. If a contributor sees an error, 
and need to be they need to be able to make an edit in the right place and fix it better. That is the magic that makes Wikipedia. Um, we, we can't have this be. Um, we have to make sure that all the system is still editable and can be owned by the community. And we need support for graceful degradation. You know, one missing lexeme shouldn't uh, block the whole article. That's the fallbacks, the fallback fallbacks that Mahir has mentioned earlier in the previous talk. And even though those, you know, those are a bit ambitious, maybe even a little bit crazy, we have also advantages running for us. First, we are aiming only for a single genre of encyclopedic text. Um, that we're not talking about beautiful lyrics, hard steering manifestos, or dreamy prose. Uh, we are writing encyclopedia text, and it's okay if it's a little bit dry. Second, we don't need to parse natural language. We don't even need to understand the abstract content, which is a huge um, advantage for us, which is a big um, differentiator to many predecessor projects. So we won't have a system that has a formal representation of the of the content. It's just this notation that allows you to generate natural language, which is a much weaker proposition. Also, we start with a very simple and low baseline. In many articles don't even exist in many languages, so we can improve on that pretty confidently. And we hope to improve the whole incentive infrastructure of Wikipedia, particularly for the smaller Wikipedias, because they now seem achievable. I and mean, if the goal seems achievable, we hope to get more people to actually work on it. So this becomes more attractive, and the whole goal of Wikipedia is extremely attractive, and we are building really towards it, towards a world where everyone can share in the sum of our knowledge. So now here's the thing. Constructors, renderers, content. It's something that I can explain to, to people who have an understanding in linguistics like you. you you'll get it uh, after a talk like this. But for many people, those are not very accessible terms. And if we actually look at them a little and, and generalize them a bit, squint a little bit, they can become much more familiar for many people. And if you think about constructors, they're actually like types in programming languages. Renderers are just like functions. And content, well, those are the values of those types. And if we do this generalization, we get actually a much more powerful system, which we call wiki functions. And this is what we're working on right now. Wiki functions is like a Wikipedia for algorithms, but you can run the algorithms. You can run the functions right there in the wiki. You can call them from any of the other wikis and have the results being displayed there. So functions, algorithm code, this is a new kind of knowledge format that we want to support, that we want to help the community to maintain, to uh, create a, a new library of such functions to, to work with this. Um, it's, a new, uh, it's the first new Wikimedia project since 2012 when Wikidata launched, and we are planning to launch later this year. And it will be entirely multilingual, both in terms of natural languages like Wikidata and programming languages. So what is a function? Well, a function is a mapping from values of type of a type to values of a possibly different type, but that's a little bit too formal and not very useful. Let's try another way. Functions is something, a function is something that takes an input, x, runs some deterministic procedure, f, over the inputs, and returns an output, f of x. Maybe a bit more helpful. What is important is functions are knowledge, a new kind of knowledge that Wikimedia is going to support um, from this year on. And knowledge is power. And in fact, functions are a kind of superpower. They don't just offer static knowledge, like a Wikipedia article that you can read and then uh, get information out of it, but a function can create knowledge based on your specific question. They can answer your questions confidently. You know that what comes out will be right, even though maybe no one else in the world has ever asked this question before. If you have a function that you trust, you know that the result will be right. You may ask a question of wiki functions and by the for and because of the very nature of wiki functions, be confident that the answer is correct. With wiki functions, we expand the type of questions, the types of knowledge that Wikipedia offers, that Wikimedia communities can work with, that Wikimedia communities can work on, can create and share by a huge amount. The big tech companies know that too, and they provide you with access to this kind of function, this kind of knowledge in their way. You can go to Siri and ask how many teaspoons in two tablespoons, and Siri will run a function for you and give you the answer. Yay. You can go to Bing and ask 
Then was Tobi Jansson born, and Bing, even though it's an actual search engine, will actually look this information up in its knowledge graph, in its own version of um, Wikidata, and run a function over the knowledge graph and give you the, inf and give you the answer for that. Now you can take this date, go to DuckDuckDrum and so ask how many days since August 9, 1914, it was doing 39,000 days. Again, it's a search engine, but it's not doing a search here. It's taking your query, interpreting it as a function call, evaluating and showing you the result for it. You can go to Google and ask, oh, give me the dictionary for water. And again, you don't need any search results, you're getting actually what you what uh, Google is giving you from the dictionary system and the functions on that. You see here, for example, the different forms for the word water in English, that it's a noun, that uh, you can have a plural of it, which is waters, and so on. All of these are very powerful query functions. But as soon as I move out of the, of the functions that those tech companies have, you know, where the PMs of those tech companies have decided, oh, yeah, we need to create this, where the engineers have actually developed it, as soon as you move out of it, it gets problematic. If I ask for the plural genitive of the Estonian word vesi, which means water, um, Google does a lookup in its web index and finds something in dictionary. So it looks in dictionary. Oh, yeah, great. Here, this is the plural genitive of it, and it gives you that, and it says vesi here. Now, the thing is, as this is not a function in this case. It's actually a lookup on the web and trying to find the right answer within the, within the answer. So. And this is indeed a conjugation of Vesi, um, but it's not in Estonian. It's, it happens that dictionary has the same entries, has all the entries for the same for the words that have the same letters on the same page. So we have on the page for Vesi, we have, for example, the Finnish, the Estonian, but also the Votic language um, noun. In this case, we actually get the um, we get the wrong. Vesi is the what, what is the language spoken by four native speakers uh, that are currently left, um, and we're getting this one because uh, it's misunderstood. So not only it looks it looks right, like it looks like oh, this could be the Estonian, uh, the Estonian uh, plural genitive, but it gives you the wrong answer. So. What we would like to provide is in wiki functions a way to actually define this kind of functions, to run those functions, to make them accessible for everyone, to democratize access to those functions and who can actually run them, share in them, and create them. We want the community to curate those functions, those knowledge creators, those question answerers for everyone. So we would have a function, for example, to convert the tablespoons into teaspoons, as we, saw, as we saw it in Siri. We would have function of calculating how many days have passed between two different days, as we saw it in DuckDuckGo. Or we would have a function like here that generates a genitive plural of an Estonian noun given a specific paradigm. So we need to know that this noun has the, this a paradigm OS type 15, um, and then it can take the uh, base form and it, it creates the, the right uh, conjugation for this noun. So this is something that Mahir pointed out that we would uh, need for, um, that would be very helpful for, for us. We'll get to this in the detail. So how does it actually turn VZ into VT? So we will have different implementations, different programming languages, and then we can take a look at for success in JavaScript or in Lua and whatever. Um, but the one thing that I find particularly interesting is called composition. And composition is um, an implementation where we take functions that are already available in wiki functions and plug them together. So in that case, we, for example, say, oh, yeah, we want to concatenate the stem of the base form with the, with the letters TE. And this is the stemmer of VZ is VE, which is the which we need to use the right stemmer in that case, which is the G1. I don't know exactly what these terms mean. I took it from a, from a grammar resource. Um, so it creates the stem of VZ, which is VE, and then adds the TE, and you get then from VZ to VT or from SUSI, which means wolf to susute, and so on. So, but now comes the interesting part. All these functions are pages in wiki functions. So just like in wiki data, where we have the QIDs, all these functions would have a set ID. So this means that these are actually Z IDs, what we have here being called, which means that all of them have labels in the specific language. So uh, the, the Estonian genitive plural, S type 15, is the label for the function. 
and concatenate is the label for the concatenate function and so on. But we can also have those functions just like in Wikidata in different languages. So what we can have is actually a view on this page, which is in Swedish, for example. And we see the same implementation, but in Swedish. We can edit it in Swedish, just as in Wikidata. And the changes are immediately uh, effective for all the other languages because it's only one implementation, just have different views on it uh, through the lens of our language, just like in Wikidata. And that means that everyone can actually edit and create those uh, implementations without having to learn native English first, which potentially unlocks a lot of people. A lot of people, uh, uh, for a lot of people, uh, creating implementations is this, this kind of very, say, oh, this is nothing for me. I don't, I don't know uh, math. I don't need to know computers. I don't know how to program. But, but the thing is actually, there was a paper in Nature last year that showed that the biggest predictor for um, the capability to program is actually language aptitude and not math or whatever. So, and language aptitude is exactly what we need here from the community. We need people who know a language well, and we have um, and we have to make the barrier as low as possible for them to create those implementations for this kind of grammatical knowledge, for the kind of syntactic um, approaches towards it. So. And one barrier is actually the English language. So making this available in their own home language, in their own native language is one step to do that. We want to make sure that the UX for this will also be very approachable for, for the contributors, that the people feel welcome to actually contribute to this kind of implementations. Thanks, Jan Ainali, for the translation of the slide to Swedish. So, we hope that this will help us to collect a lot of grammatical and morphological knowledge and for many languages and all the different paradigms for the words, for the nouns and so on, all the information about syntax and how to build sentences and clauses and phrases. So that in the end, we can have those renderers for like only person that in as many languages as possible. And one place we are looking for is a grammatical framework because they have done this before. This is an open source project um, that uh, allows for the multilingual um, generation of natural language. Natural language systems have been around for decades and grammatical framework has been particularly inspiration for how we do FCQB. It shows that actually it can be done what we're doing here. It's a completely uh, bonkers. Um, it uh, has an abstract notation, can translate in natural language, has a rich resource um, grammar and so on, in numerous different languages uh, at the same time. We've been talking with the grammatical framework community. They have tons of experience in that, doing that for more than two decades. And we want to work together, learn from each other. It doesn't need to mean that we will necessarily need, use grammatical framework, but it will be an option and we want to make sure that it is one possibility. We can also use other things and wiki functions should be flexible enough to allow for more, uh, for more than this. But I'm super happy to announce today in this talk that the Wikimedians are invited to the Grammatical Framework Online Summer School for free. So they have a summer school every few years. Um, and this year, Wikimedians can attend um, without any cost to the online version of the summer school. Um, and the course will all be taken by um, Digital Grammars, which is a, which is a spin-off from the university that created the uh, Grammatical Framework. And if you want to attend, um, you're super, um, you're very welcome. Don't register on the website. We'll check out with this week's abstract Wikipedia weekly, the instructions on how to join the summer school as a Wikimedian so that you don't have to pay for it. So. We talked about uh, the need for lexicographic data in Wikidata. This is something that Mahi talked in the previous talk. So we will need a lot of lexicographic knowledge in order to generate all this natural language um, yeah, for abstract Wikipedia. So what we have is in 2018, the extended Wikidata do not only have information about items in the world, but also about verbs. This is ultimately to support the Wiktionary project, but also to support abstract Wikipedia, because this knowledge about words will be used in order to generate natural language for the Wikipedias. Here, for example, you see the entry for the English noun water. 
We have information such as etymology, for example, here. And, and just as with statements about items in Wikidata, we can actually use this information in the Sparkle input of Wikidata to create all kinds of visualizations, such as this etymological graph of the word water in the Indo-European languages that Wikidata knows about. So we see here water comes from water, just as the German Wasser, and it goes back to water and so on and so on. The whole etymology for all the Indo-European languages that are connected inside of Wikidata. So we don't have only this kind of information. What we also have is actually, you know, the forms, the different um, realizations of this word and the different um, grammatical uh, situations. So we, for example, for water, we have a singular and water as so a plural, which can be used in certain cases. English isn't particularly um, complex with regards to a lot of forms. Let's take, let's go back to the Estonian word for lazy. I hope you can read it a little bit. It's a little bit small. Um, so we have, the, we know that the sense is water. But also we have the forms. So this is just this is just a small number of the forms that it has. But it particularly also contains the uh, plural genitive that we were looking earlier at the beta here. And but it has more than three dozen forms for for lazy in Estonian. Wikidata currently has uh, more than half a million lexemes already. Mahi mentioned that already in seven hundred and eighty languages. So we're still only at the beginning, but it's growing well and fast. We have more than 9 million forms currently, this, um, realizations of those lexemes and differences, and more than 140,000 senses for these words, which, which may be involved. The lexicographical part of Wikidata saw so far more than 3.7 million edits, um, and this by about, nine, about 1,900 contributors that have contributed plus a number of IPs. So obviously these numbers are much smaller than those for the ontological knowledge base in Wikidata. But also remember that the project is much newer. It started only in 2018. And that the dictionaries have a similar difference to the Wikipedias in orders of magnitude as we have as we have seen here with regards to the number of contributors and edits and so on. So all of this checks out uh, um, the lexicographic data seems on track, but still we want to grow them more. We really want to grow it faster and see more. Uh, contributions to the lexicographical data. And let's talk about a few ideas for how to get there. So one thing that we did is a dash report, and this is something that the community has really picked up, and Nikki in particular has been updating it a lot. Um, so this graph shows the coverage of the lexicographical data compared to, the, to Wikipedia as a corpus. So of all the tokens that appear in meaning of all the words uh, um, that appear in Wikipedia, this is how many of those are actually already have a form in the, in the lexicographical data of Wikidata. So there are about 92% um, of the words that have, we have in Wikipedia are covered by the data in uh, Wikidata for English. It's, about, it's more about than 80% in Estonian. And this is the number of different words and how many of those are cut. So it's much, much smaller in English. And Estonian is actually a pretty uh, solid amount. Estonian is the second largest language that we currently have in uh, the lexicographical data and Wikidata. Another way to visualize this is to take, for example, a sentence like this Martin Luther King co uh, quote, uh, Martin Luther King Jr. quote, the time is always right to do what is right. And see how many of those words are actually covered, for example, by the English Wikipedia. Do we see which lexeme like, is that we can annotate it, which form is being used, which sense is being invoked. Now, I said the goal of the lexicographic data is for us to support the, the dictionaries. Um, so VASI already exists in a lot of the dictionaries, and isn't it just duplicating the word? And, in one way you could say so, but on the other side, the problem is a little bit different. So in the dictionaries, you already have the word lazy, as said. So this is the, as the entry for the Estonian word lazy from the English dictionary. You can see actually there's a big table of declensions and, um, and we have the same forms that we have also in Wikidata. Now in dictionary, in the English dictionary, these are created by using a template. So we have this template where you take the stem and then add the, um, the suffix on that. And the English dictionary actually has a category for Estonian nominal inflections. 
um, templates and for all the different paradigms. And so there are 48 pages in this category. And these are all available to the English uh, dictionary and it's used by the 9,000 entries that we have in the Estonian, um, that we have for Estonian in the English dictionary. But all of these are not used in any of the other um, languages. Now, if we go to German, for example, instead of the 48 templates, we have a module written in Lua, 287 lines of modules that cover all the different inflections of Estonian nouns. And the funny thing is, even though we have this great module in German, there's actually no entry for the word Wesi in the German dictionary, and the German dictionary only has 957 Estonian lexemes. English has 9,000, as I said, Estonian itself has 10,000, Wikidata has 80,000, uh, including more than 8,000 verbs and 60,000 nouns. And all of these are not visible in the dictionaries. If you go to other dictionaries, um, like here, this is the Estonian entry. We see translations uh, in different languages, uh, we see synonyms, and then we see here the forms. There's actually much fewer forms than we saw in the in the English uh, dictionary, or uh, you would see in the German dictionary if it would be using the Lua module, it's many fewer than we have in Wikidata. One of the reasons is it makes actually a lot of sense to just give you a few forms because as a speaker of Estonian, if you're reading the Estonian dictionary, you're probably a speaker of Estonian, you actually know how to create the other forms. They're pretty regular, so you don't need to write them all out. But this table here is actually written in the local page, this is not a template being called and created, but all of these forms are written here manually inside of the Estonian entry. Um, and this, so there's a lot of duplication going on. And if you go to the other entries in other languages, for example, Russian even gives you fewer forms, just the singular and the plural, not even the other cases. And most of the other languages don't even give you any forms. This is the Spanish one, the same thing is for French. They just give you, well, it means water and the word is easy. It doesn't give you any information on the forms. Um, and it's very hard actually to find out which dictionaries even have an Estonian entry, uh, uh, even have an entry for the Estonian word, because they're all on the same page and um, they're difficult. So this is this is the actual original sin of the dictionaries: is that all this data, all this information, is completely independently held in those different languages. We have no way to share the. German Lua module, we have no way to share so to share the templates on the English, we have no way to share all these different forms and so on. They're all independent. So the cost of dictionary really is huge. We have 167 dictionary that in each one of them aims to create complete dictionaries of all the languages in the world. So we want to create actually 167 dictionaries for each of the languages of the world. Um, so we have to multiply the number of languages, the number of words, the number of forms and senses, the number of languages we want to present all of this. And this is a huge, huge, huge number. This is a huge effort that the dictionaries want to stand. So in order to scale up the dictionaries, I would really suggest that we um, we have to reduce this effort. We have to, to make we have to make our contributors more effective. And, and one goal to do this is to centralize the forms and sentences in an improved Wikidata. Wikidata currently has a few bugs which make it very hard to actually edit the lexicographical data. We have to tackle those. Um, and uh, Wikimedia Germany is aware of that and wants to work on that um, within this year. And just as with the info boxes in Wikipedia, the forms really don't have to be maintained and created in each language independently. The German dictionary has less than a thousand entries for Estonian. Said, and it would, it's why not just use them from, from Wikidata? Why not just display all of this? Why not in the, in the Croatian dictionary? Why not just use the information about Estonian words directly, just display them with uh, templates coming from dictionary? So the display of data from, uh, from Wikidata and dictionary, this is something we need to unlock and that we want to work on this year as well. Another thing is that we want to make the entry of the data much simpler. The user experience of Wikidata isn't particularly friendly for entering uh, information. One way that we um, that I worked on in my previous job when I was still at Google is to uh, is to publish something called lexical masks. 
a project where we collect knowledge about which forms for each language are expected for each category of words. And then we can say, oh yeah, Estonian nouns, they have the plural and singular in the following cases. This is how they look like. Um, Basque verbs, we have the following tenses, etc. And then we can take this information about, for example, Basque verbs and turn it into a specification that is needed, for example, for Lucas Werkmeister's Wikidata lexeme forms. So we can have the same information and just automatically generate the lexeme forms for it and then help to, uh, which are which are much easier to enter the data than it is for the, for the standard UX of uh, Wikidata. We can use the same lexeme forms to also generate the entity schemas in Wikidata. Entity schemas are used to check on um, whether an item of our team follows certain patterns, whether it has all the grammatical features it's being expected if all the representations are there. So we have created, for example, the, the entity schema for Basque verbs. Then we can run them against the entries that are in Wikidata. We get a list of um, all entries with an error and so on, and a list of all the entries that pass. So we can actually be much more effective and check whether those, um, whether the entries actually follow the specification for a given language, whether they are complete. So we have one source for mastery, we have the information, we can create the forms for entering the data automatically, we can create the entity schemes for checking the data automatically. If you want, the, there's still a team at Google working on those, and they would love to work on these for more languages and to help you actually use these for your language if you already um, are working with this. So if you want me to connect you with the team, please contact me. I'd be very happy to make the connection and um, and help make this part of Wikidata, lexicographical data more um, scalable. So this is one way you want to scale a dictionary. We want to, we are thinking about using crowdsourcing for entering a lot of the data in dictionary because you know, unlike for Wikidata, um, Everyone can tell you what the plural of goose is or check whether the plural of goose is this and this, but not everyone can check the date before Queen Victoria. So there's a lot of more opportunity actually to crowdsource for like geographical data than it's there for ontological data. And finally, one that uh, also might be appointed already to is that the thing that the, the English templates do or the German Lua module is to generate um, the bright paradigms and generate regular inflections and declinations uh, through functions and wiki functions, as we have seen earlier. So we can have this function for the uh, Estonian genitive plural, for example. And the question, and my estimate is that more than 98% of all forms across languages are regular. So we can probably just use this kind of functions to actually generate those forms. And that would be awesome. That would speed up the entry of, uh, of the forms by a lot and also increase the quality if you kind of check if those are still uh, correct and so on. And the big question is how, and here we come now to the many questions that I have. How do we actually connect those functions for paradigms? It will be in wiki functions with the data in Wikidata. How do we make sure that they are consistent? Uh, how do we actually generate them from the first place? Do we generate them on the fly? Do we like generate them beforehand and show them, and which which gives them an idea and which allows you to put statements on them? Um, this is something we need to discuss. Um, and we should really write out a plan together um, with how to, how to figure it out. The next question, you know, generating whole articles is really hard, but what about just generating descriptions for the wiki, for the wiki data items. Um, this is just a noun phrase in most cases, should be much simpler. And it's it's part of the of the way to abstract um, articles anyway. So maybe by this time next year, we can have a way where we can have abstract descriptions in Wikidata so that all the descriptions for a specific item, and you could still operate them in your local language, but if it's missing, it will be coming from some abstract description which is then generated on the fly for your language. And you can edit the description for all the languages in the, at the same time, but just edit in the abstract description. So maybe an idea that we can work on together. The same thing for the glosses for census, even though I think this will be particularly challenging, it might be actually an option to, to have those glosses be written. And if we do this, this might be a super valuable resource for natural language understanding and for uh, for knowledge representation in general. But if, if you have all the senses written in abstract glosses that are machine understandable, that's an old dream for <laughs> for a lot of dictionaries. And but. Those are all steps, you know, working towards full articles, um, which we will then uh, finally aim for. So, 
here, uh, this year we, we chose together with Wikimedia Deutschland to work on a number of focus languages where we will work particularly uh, tightly together with the communities and then we will test our features first. The focus languages that we chose are Bengali, Malayalam, Hausa, Igbo, and Dagbani as a stretch language. And um, this will be our first focus, you know, for testing the improvements to Wikidata, for testing the first steps that we're taking with AppSec, Wikipedia, and so on. And the timeline we are aiming for is to this year focus Wiki, um, to focus on the launch of Wiki functions and to have it out to start a new community, to start a new Wikimedia project, um, always a big thing. And then next year to focus around AppSec Wikipedia, to focus around, you know, abstract descriptions first, probably for Wikidata, focus about how to represent the things at all, how to have the renderers in Wiki functions and to uh, collect this data. And then in 2023, we aim to um, connect it all the way together with the Wikipedias so that we have the actual abstract Wikipedia there in order to have more people share in more knowledge in more languages, getting really a meaningful cl step closer to a world where everyone can share the sum of our knowledge. Thank you for the attentions. I hope I didn't speak too long and I really um, looking forward if you have questions and discussions. Thank you very much, Daniel. That was great. I haven't seen any specific questions yet in the Telegram chat. It's more of like a, an applause kind of thing. <laughs> but I have a question myself, uh, which is, um, so I've, I've been doing a lot of work with uh, Lexemes lately. And what I'm still not quite understanding is how uh, how the Lexemes will be like uh, how wiki functions will know which lexemes to get for a certain function. Uh, do you have any insight on that? So the idea is basically to have um, abstract meaning represented as a as a function as a set object which says, okay, I want. Uh, okay, let, let's take a concrete example. Um, in the in the Nobel Prize example, Marie Curie uh, has, is the only person who has won the Nobel Prize in two different scientific categories. Um, we would know actually, for example, um, how to express Nobel Prize. <laughs> and in that case, you would probably just point to the item and then from the item we can say, okay, well, um, we can take Nobel Prize as the base form and hopefully generate. I don't expect to actually have like seams for Nobel Prize in this case. Um, but rather, we just have the item, which is taken to be the this one. And then we can take this label and assume this is a noun phrase and try to put it together. Maybe we will need to have a uh, lexeme like for it because you sometimes need to inflect noble independently from price and so on. And you, or you need to know that actually, okay, noble is the last name and those are inflected like this. And price is the head and then we use noble as the descriptor and then we basically need to break to fill it down. Okay, this, this is getting more complicated than I wanted to, for example. Um, let's take the scientific. So um, scientific could be, for example, just a set ID which then says, okay, I am represented by the following lexemes in the following languages. Um, and then you can just explicitly list all the lexemes for each given language and say, okay, just, just take this L over here and take this L item over there um, in order to represent this set ID meaning, this constructor here. Um, so we basically would have a mapping from meanings to lexemes or to functions um, because it's not always just a single lexeme, right? It could also be this actually um, you need to describe. So you could easily imagine that there's a language that doesn't have a specific word, and but has but needs a phrase in order to describe it. So we can actually provide, for example, this phrase in abstract way, and then hopefully this phrase in turn can be generated for this language. There's still a bit of things to figure out, but basically we would need some mapping from meanings to how it breaks down to lexicographical representations for each of those meanings, and this I expect to be in the in the function world. Um, it could also be the other way around that we actually have, that we're using the senses much more effectively. Um, but I've, 
My current thought is that this is probably more difficult. On the other side, I hope the wiki function will be flexible enough for the community to try out both sides and see which one actually is more um, effective and more uh, useful for the community. In short, I have actually no idea what the answer is. I just have ideas of what we will be trying out. <laughs> Great, thank you. Uh, and the second question, what can people do right now in order to contribute to this project somehow? Uh, even users who are not uh, very technically skilled, perhaps. Yes. Um, so Mahir has already described actually a lot of this. So preparing, adding more lexicographical data into Wikidata is probably the one place where we can really have an impact in order to make it ready for, for the language. And um, we'd like to, I'd like to, uh, so if, if you want to do this, uh, you can also reach out to me and I can connect you with either the team at Google with the lexical masks, or I can connect you with, um, another thing that we want to do is to think about crowdsourcing for the lexicographical data and so on. So really building out the lexicographical data yeah. is, is one place and figuring out how to connect possible integrations of the wiki functions functions with the lexicographical data and so on is another place. Um, so, so those, so, so basically this is the level that would be very useful now. Unfortunately, wiki functions is not there yet. <laughs> Otherwise I would just point to it and say, oh yeah, just come here and join us this new awesome community and work on those functions. But we will launch it. Um, this year, this is the plan. And um, then we can also work there and see how things uh, will develop from there. But for now, I think working on the lexicographical data is probably the most promising part. Great. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, I'm, I just I'm very excited for this project to launch, at least. So uh, I yes, wish you all the best. Yeah, I just want to uh, echo what Mahi is just saying in the YouTube chat, I think. So links to census to items and other census. This, this is also a part that can potentially have a lot of impact on the project. If we have a much better understanding of how those senses work together, it will be much easier later to actually create the, the renderers, to actually connect those. One reason why I think that we need this mapping from meanings to like seems explicitly in in wiki functions is because currently the senses aren't that well developed yet. If we can actually, um, if we can actually improve the sensor presentation in, in uh, wiki data considerably, if we can actually figure out how to to work on it in a way that makes it more accessible to a function, and then we can work on the other side of wiki functions. Then in that case, we can actually have a we may potentially have a much easier time to create those functions that say, okay, but well, I want to say this, and you just give me one lexeme, like and for the languages that you don't speak, I can actually wander through the translations and synonyms and item for the sense links and get to the other lexemes like for this language. Uh, so this is something where we can then fall back onto non-explicit information, which is already there in the sense description. So having more senses on the on the lexemes and having them in um, presented better is definitely also something that would be potentially extremely helpful for AppSec Wikipedia and to, to increase the coverage that AppSec Wikipedia can have. So yes, um, and uh, Mahir is also pointing out forms can wait. In a sense, it's probably true because a lot of the forms are regular and then you know having those functions that actually generate them can be super helpful in making them much faster and reduce the work on it now. So. Yeah, in a sense, I, uh, I kind of think that's also true. We can wait with the forms. Um, on the other side, they are, they are easier to contribute. Um, and it's having more of them is also helpful like, to test your um, functions and so on. So, but, but the senses are really the hard part. This is where we really should come together and figure out how to actually um, represent it in a, in a more stringent way. On the other side, I don't think that we will find a solution in <laughs> Um, that we find the one solution for census in the next uh, few weeks or months, and that the interplay of wiki functions and wiki data will then lead to a, to a new situation anyway. So having more census is definitely a very good idea. Definitely. And I think I mentioned to you before the, the example of uh, verbs in, in Swahili. 
which like every single verb can have thousands of potential forms because of the way things are inflected. And that's not really viable to have on every Swahili lexeme, of course. Yes. So uh, having a function for uh, generating those would be a much better solution. Yes, I agree. Uh, so it all goes hand in hand, sort of. Uh, right. So yeah. let's put it this way. I have no idea where we'll be in one year, but I definitely want to be in a very different place than we are right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, thank you very, very much, Denny. It was great having you. Uh, and great to learn even more about the, the abstract Wikipedia and Wikifunctions projects. So yeah, thank you. <laughs>